Um, my name is Andy. I have been playing Osu since 2016, so it's been a little bit under eight years now. Seven years. All right, I'm just going to let it out there. This is not going to be a well-edited video. In fact, I don't think I'm going to be adding too, too much to the conversation, but I just wanted to really just, I don't know, just give my two cents about Blazer and just, uh, I woke up like an hour ago. Sorry if I ramble and all that. So I think Osu Laser is very cool and what's going to bring to the table. It's been in development for a very long time, but I think it's ultimately going to be the reason why I don't play this game anymore. In around 2020, I was introduced to leaderboard farming, where the concept is you would use certain mods to place highly on leaderboards. What is leaderboard farming? The idea of top uh, farming, generally the idea of farming number one scores, top eight, which is basically the front page of leaderboard scores on stable and top 50s which is just landing on the actual leaderboard your typical leaderboard score will be just a top 50 so these might be pretty easy to get in the beginning but just or pretty difficult never know on the maps but um yeah top eights are pretty much top eights are generally not that easy because they typically require a bit more grinding with like certain mods um if they're permanent scores then you usually need to be on them very quickly like if you just need to like camp them then yeah these scores are usually more happy about, and number ones are the big, the um, the pedestal, the magnum opus of your profiles per se, because there's a little dedicated section of how many number ones you have. But I guess number ones, I would say number ones are best flashlight. If if you're not really great at the game, like if you can't really play above five stars, I would say flashlight's a way to go with like certain mod combinations for like normal diffs. Unless if you want to look into the other two being camping, which is just I don't know why you would want to torture yourself in spinning, which is just having a certain technique of, of vibrating your hand with your mouse or pet tablet. I mean, it really depends on your play style. You can you can get high spin high spin plays either way. There would be easy easy difficulties where you would typically have three mod with uh, three mod or four mod with typically flashlight usage or a spinner high spinner usage. You would have normals typically using a little bit of the same but being a little bit more competitive on the top 8 end because you can use flashlight and typically get top 8. You have hard difficulties which you would typically use uh, hidden double time. You might use 3 mod if you're like a AR-11 guy. Um, those are the main three I would consider I leaderboard farmed. There's also other diffs when you go up the ranks but you'd actually have to be good at the game which I am not. The max spinner RPM is 477. If you want um, maps to practice your spins. I think American Penguin has some. Um, for Flashlight, there are certain programs. If you go to Stop of Sniping's uh, resources, there are programs that will help you chunking, which is a method of memorizing maps. I definitely recommend this opposingly of just this program versus just making practice diffs because it will already make bus sliders, which essentially have the combo scaling in mind when attempting to run flashlight because um, if you didn't know, the higher combo you have until 200, um, it gets darker to see. I wouldn't say there's any way of going about flashlight that's incorrect. The only thing I would say is don't mindlessly, I mean you want to go about it a kind of efficient way, so I wouldn't say just keep constantly mindlessly just restarting it. You should objectively take kind of like the geometry dash approach where you're chunking certain parts as I mentioned earlier. Uh, for flashlight, Flashlight skin preference, but just some. Um, these are two that I see that are used pretty commonly, so yeah. And other other leaderboard scores. I feel like at a certain point, this leaderboard farming could definitely enforce addiction, OSU addiction. So try to take it as a side um, quest as you can. There's some benefits, obviously, to it, but just it could be a big time consumer too. If you balance your time, then just keep that in mind. You can use a bot called BathBot, and there's some other bots too that can check how many leaderboards you have. Uh, take a shit, country number ones, etc. There's a lot of things and factors about that. Leaderboard farming can pretty much be started out with just newly ranked maps and just start using certain mod combinations to place highly on them with high accuracy being favored, uh, high spin plays being favored, and higher mods being favored. Here is just some for example. I would say things that could help you out with leaderboard farming is knowing what skill sets you're good at, being the R A R or no D better at reading higher approach rate, better at reading lower approach rate, and just knowing how tight the timing window is. I'm someone who enjoys generally a little bit of lower AR, so that being said, just that being said, just because you're better at some maps doesn't mean you should just downright avoid them. You should still play all types of difficulties to just get better at them. Terminology or scenarios being a score V1 where you might have better accuracy, accuracy than someone, but because you got 100 later on, it's weighted more and punishes you further versus someone who got 100 at the beginning. No spinner maps are technically called permas because you can get permanent scores on them typically with like general um, modifiers and you don't have to worry about your position ever moving unless if someone else uses much harder mods to beat your score. Snipe this with someone when, snipe this when someone beats your score. This is just generally harder maps. 
I would say typically in like the um, hard difficulty range or just unpopular maps, you might just see modifiers that are typically not really seen, like hidden hard rock be used for like a hard difficulty that's maybe like kind of upper end hard difficulty, like 5.2 or above with like higher BPM stuff. So that's why it's a little bit harder to place on. So that's why you would see typically hidden hard rock or just double time scores. Just ranked is basically just as soon as a map gets ranked, people just like want to quickly get on it. People have like programs, all different types of ways of just trying to like get on them on um, the announce page, which might have a little bit of delay, websites, etc., to know when a map is being placed. It's also known as camping. So yeah. Um, stacked maps are pretty much maps that are no notorious for just having really tough leaderboards to just get on overall you need either really high accuracy the map itself is pretty difficult the map can be pretty old so you might have some really old plays on there that are just generally pretty hard to beat or just the map itself is just not that easy so yeah the um, benefits of leaderboard farming is just generally just appreciating a lot of different map sets um developing more skill sets finger control more consistency gaining more rank scores. Um, just overall, just a way to enjoy the game more honestly and just uh, get a little competitive. Um, you can make friends. Yeah, just overall have a good time with it. It's more of a side quest thing, but it could also just be your main thing later on, which it eventually did for me. Uh, leaderboard farmers, um, you'll just you'll just naturally see like a bunch of leaderboards and just see familiar faces all the time and just be like, hey, I really like your plays. Just review profiles and stuff like that. So yeah, these are just like some examples of like typical people I would you know, would think of, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There's just a lot of, there's so many cool uh, leaderboard players. I never had the time to um, make these videos just generally due to like lack of motivation or just general, you know, time. But there's a lot of cool players who look up when you leaderboard farm from all different types of ranges, all different types of ranges and stories and play styles and overall age and profile. So, with Osu Laser coming out, if you go on the Osu page and enable Laser Mode, you're going to see this mod called Classic. So what does that mean? Classic mod essentially, with any Osu mod, which basically modifies the game, right? It will change the amount of score you'll get or decrease based on the modifier. In the case of Classic mod, your base score multiplier is 1. Anything that adds or subtracts will like change that modifier or the number. Classic will change your 1 to 0 0.96, which is a removal of 0 0.04. Doesn't sound too crazy, and the whole point of this is this the overall accuracy comparing Osu, I mean Osu Classic to Osu Laser principle by now including what's called score v2 accuracy by when you hold the slider. Back then there used to not be any hit window. You can hit as late or early as you want, and it would always be a perfect on sliders. Most of the time, obviously. With Osu Laser, it keeps in mind of when you hit the slider, meaning there is now slider accuracy. Because it's trying to incorporate the type of scoring metric we've used for like tournaments in modern day play called Score V2. Go from total score, being like a score incre incremental increase, like the more combo you have, the more higher score, to more of a centralized 1 million scoring basis. You'll see this in a lot of DSRGs like Sound Vortex, uh, DDR, etc. This brings out a huge problem with leaderboard farming. This single modifier, the single difference it does, essentially kills all permanence, say, for uh, leaderboards that kind of had like, kind of like a legacy to them. So I would say anything that, oh, fucking any, any leaderboard is basically dead now. What do I mean by that? There's just so many examples, but this is just one example. If you look at United, you have a high hidden hard rock play beating a hidden double time play of United just because it has a classic mod. For someone who doesn't play Osu, it might be a little hard to understand what makes this so fucking crazy, but MREC has a 99.2 accuracy, and the higher accuracy has like a 0. Point you cannot tell me in any universe that the hard, hidden hard rock player should be MREC in this case. Just to just to how freaking harder it is. It's actually really funny. One of my older number one plays actually. Double time hidden flashlight. And on stable, this would beat my score, right? But this just doesn't sit right with me. I don't care that it's my number one or anything. The, these all of these like multipliers, it's just completely changed. Obviously, with change. There's always going to be people that are unhappy with it, 
And, you know, if it's to make the game overall better, um, I can support that. But for me, who's just brushed on the Osu Laser videos explained kind of kind of lightly without actually playing Osu Laser, it just doesn't make sense to me. Another thing that I guess I felt like is going to kill the uh, Osu Leader experience is how there are so many mods. This is just... There's so many mods. Could I just be overwhelmed? Yeah. Things be more simplified? I definitely think so. But also, the idea of um, what we would call in Osu Leader War Farming permas or permanent scores would be maps that would have strict um, mod modifiers that like were pretty much optimized to the point where you can keep a permanent score as long as the map didn't have any spinners. With this, it's the end of that too. There, There's no say of what keeps a leaderboard permanent because of all of these modifiers. Maybe the combination will be figured out soon, but it's just like, is Osu Laser just gimmicky to me as like leaderboard farming? Because like leaderboard farming was so straightforward and linear with like some several mods that you would use and things would make sense. Like there would be modifiers that would like add up to the numbers so you would know what would be equivalent or what would be slightly better. Double time flashlight is slightly worse than like hidden hard rock flashlight. That's all you need to know and stuff. But there's just so many layers now. I'm kind of yapping on here, but the three mod score should obviously be better, be better than the hidden hard rock flashlight score in my opinion. I mean, this is all subjective stuff, but it's just fucking confusing. There are two other players I think that sum up the whole Osu laser thing much better than I ever could, which was is Chicken Tens and I'm Merv's thoughts about Osu laser and. It, Everything they say is very good, but the things that resonate with me, the game is simply not enjoyable now because you don't even know if the scores you're setting now will have any relevance. The thing that you number one prided about being a leaderboard farmer is just seeing yourself on these leaderboards. With Osu Laser, nothing makes sense. All of your scores could just pretty much be irrelevant because of these changes over time, right? Permas are gone. You don't know if some freaking blind player is just gonna like beat a new mod and it's like all of your scores are gone. I'm speaking from a heart of a leaderboard farmer. We are definitely a minority in the community where, you know, for the sake of Osu Laser development, this is not the most important thing. Obviously Osu Laser is probably gonna be better in the long because it's exciting to see development. Dable has been around for so long and, you know, it's gonna be better for the game. There's like new like challenges or daily challenges and huge mapping improvements and just making the um, overall interface to make a lot more sense and a lot more user friendly. But as a leaderboard farmer, I'm pretty sure everyone can agree this is, this is this is the end. And all scores that are set before Laser, aka Stable, will be pointless when players start playing with a classic mod. So yeah, any sense of how old this game is? Osu is very old. It's been around for I don't know how long now. That sounds really stupid, but this game's freaking old, right? Yeah, any old score you see on a leaderboard, it's gonna be on because of the whole classic thing. Not just like old scores, old scores. Stable, which is modern times, are just gonna be irrelevant. Could this be technically a renaissance of, oh, new Osu a leaderboard farmers and stuff like that? Maybe, maybe it could be, but I just, I don't see it being the case. The current community we have is pretty small and I'm, I don't wanna speak out on the behalf of the entire leaderboard community because even for me, I'm, I'm not even really a part of it, or even what even is the community. It's just like a bunch of players that probably play to their own certain niches and difficulties. Basically, probably like a few handful of like Discord servers and stuff like that. So it's not really that huge in the beginning. I mean, I can appreciate a good old like profile that has like like legacy and stuff like that. Like Haxwell. Like Osu leaderboard farming isn't really talked about in the community. Certain scores are, but the actual topic in itself isn't really that talked about. But I feel like it's done enough impact where it should be this problem should be talked about more because it's killing a small but yet integral part of the community that sets these very cool scores you can say of some like random like six digit getting their first number one or some really cool flashlight players like i feel like i could be wrong about this but like certain like i don't know like gn scores or certain 1k pp scores wouldn't have came out if it wasn't for in a sense of leaderboards leaderboard farming I wonder where FG Sky's freaking four mod scores are gonna be. They're probably gonna be like, I don't know, top 25 or even lower now with these whole like changes to the scoring thing. What I'm trying to ultimately say is that it's unfortunate what's gonna happen, but I don't think there's anything we can really do as a leaderboard community to really change this. The only thing we can really say is just nerf the classic mod problem, but I just think classic mod is stupid to begin with. Why do I say that? So 
the game I play nowadays is called Pump It Up, five panel dance game. And in the, uh, I, I will say, I kind of like to compare Osu Laser to Pump It Up, the previous version being XX, the 20th anniversary, going to Phoenix, Pump It Up Phoenix, right? Pump It Up Phoenix introduced 1 million scoring and kept the same feel of the game. Holds, you can hold them in the beginning of it. Why are you suddenly changing the engine? So I think that's great because the 1 million scoring is going to make things a lot better with the score whole P, uh, score v1 thing. The problem is that they're taking in the slider and accuracy. Something that was never like done before. And that's where you lose me. The main thing I think that made Pump It Up Phoenix very controversial. Pump It Up was known to be a game about freestyling. It's about movement. It's about dancing, right? In Pump It Up Phoenix, it removed freestyle charts. And this made a minority of the community pretty upset because you're kind of like getting rid of the soul aspect of Pump It Up in its like longevity of history. But it's technically at the cost of making the game more relevant for its current community base. I think that's the perfect representation of how I feel about leaderboard farming because, again, leaderboard farming has technically been around not like as like important as like a freestyle comparing to like Pump It Up. But it was always there for its older community base, and then as it would continue growing, there's still like a minority of a community that was still involved with it. And will Osu Laser develop to be, you know, the successor of Osu? Yeah. But it's not going to be for Widowbird Farmers. This classic mod is saying fuck you to those players, and it's just gonna kill the community. I think it's made me realize that this is just a video game. Nothing is forever in the end of the day, and Osu Laser kind of, for me, is farewell to Osu, because where I got most of my enjoyment was by leaderboard validation, and also just setting really cool scores and challenging myself to push for top 8s to really get that permanent score on, like, hard difficulty maps, because it just brought a certain self-fulfillment of, like, kind of, like, legacy or of appreciation of songs that I really wanted to otherwise. Nothing really matters anymore with this, and as I get older... It's also just a realization that these are just games. And I was just kind of addicted, just wasting my time, right? But on the other hand, I want to think Osu. I will always be around Osu. There's there's no doubt in my mind that I, if I'm hearing a bop, I will be tapping with my fingers or I'll be streaming to a map, right? That's just, I love this game. Maybe not as much as before, but I still think about Osu a lot. I think if the content creators that came alongside of it, if you think of like people like, I don't know, Mirai, BTMC, Karyu, especially Karyu is really just just a handful of people that I look up to a lot and just think more than just an Osu community, but rather just how awesome this game is. Osu has really broadened my horizons and was really the first game that showed me rhythm game music. And I think it's an integral part of who I am and what I appreciate in music. There's so many songs I wouldn't have been able to find, so many artists I wouldn't be able to find if it wasn't for Osu. So in that sense, I'm very thankful. I think leaderboard farming kind of had a bit of, for me to contribute to that because by the time I was done kind of competing for APP and stuff like that, I was just... And then because of that, it introduced... It kind of kept me in a span of playing the game more and then just, you know, finding new maps, new songs to play, so yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say.